Let's talk about some bubbly, sparkling wine, a.k.a. champagne, if it comes from the Champagne region of France only. Sparkling wine is the generic term used to identify any table wine with the addition of its effervescence, or CO2. Along with climate and type of grapes, the method of incorporating the bubbles is one of the most important defining quality factors, how they get the bubbles in there. Sparkling wines can be found in a wide range of styles, from delicate to powerful, simple to complex, dry to sweet, quality levels, and price points. Expensive to cheap. Champagne is a sparkling wine that derives from the Champagne region, about 90 miles northeast of Paris. The most prestigious Champagne houses and vineyards are located near and or within the city of Reims and the town of Epernay. Great tour if you ever get a chance to go. Awesome. How Champagne is made, there's only one question on the test, so just relax and enjoy uh, how Champagne is made. It's, uh, it's a cool process and fun to know, and you can dazzle your friends and uh, boss with just a little bit of information that you remember from this. Look for red and bold on one slide, and that would be what you do need to remember for the test. Other than that, you're just enjoying and learning something. Grapes are harvested early, uh, usually late September, to maintain their crisp acid levels and low sugar content. Since Champagne utilizes two separate fermentations, the grapes are harvested with low sugar levels to achieve a lower amount of initial alcohol. First fermentation is used to create the initial base wine. Basically, at that, at that point, it's a table wine. And then the second fermentation produces the carbon dioxide the bubbles. If you've seen the Lucille Ball show where they're walking around in the uh, in the big barrel of wine to squish the grapes, uh, that's still done. You can still do that in some uh, winemaking operations, smaller ones obviously, but not for champagne. The grapes are pressed gently with a wide device to prevent excess time traveling through the skins in order to limit the juice and the skin t contact uh, because typically you don't want it red, although there is a rosé champagne. The juice is then placed into stainless steel tanks or sometimes oak barrels where the first fermentation takes place in order to create the base wine. So the first fermentation creates the base wine known as the Vin Clair. And on the right there you can see the big uh, huge bats that they uh, put it in to ferment. The, the uh, grapes sit in there and uh, sometimes they can be in those oak barrels. And then we have the Cuvée Assemblage. Blending of multiple base wines from various years, often dozens of different wines, to create a desired consistent house style. So year after year, some years are colder, hotter, wetter, drier. Uh, so they don't want to, uh, uh, champagnes, unlike wines, they don't want it to be different year to year. They, if you have some Dom, it should taste the same as it did last year, so that's why they blend. If it's a vintage year, however, if it's uh, champagne uh, 2003, then um, you would put a smaller percentage of reserve base wines uh, and blend them. So it would have to be uh, predominantly from that year. So a couple of reminders here. These are very wordy uh, slides. And I did that because I don't want to have 300 slides. And uh, you don't need to know this. It's just for general uh, information. So don't forget, you can hit the um, pause button to read the rest of the slide if you don't get done. So the second fermentation, which incorporates the carbonation or the the bubbles, this is strictly controlled process called method champagnois that must be used to make all champagne and may be used in other high quality sparkling wines throughout the world. The blended base wine is bottled and combined with a dose of sugar and yeast in order to induce a secondary fermentation. Secondary fermentation will produce a greater degree of alcohol, totaling about 12%, along with the carbon dioxide, the bubbles.
Well, you're starting to see why champagne can be expensive. There's a lot of steps and time in the process. So then we get to the aging part. At this stage, the bottles are cellared, put in a, um, a, a damp, uh, cool place. A lot of times it's a, a cave. And uh, I think they're chalk caves or something like that. Uh, and they're inverted in racks, so on a downward angle, 45 degrees to encourage the yeast to travel uh, toward the neck of the bottle for eventual removal. So that's why they're angled so that ultimately in, in later we'll show you how they take the um, yeast out of there. The wine is uh, stored at a minimum of 15 months for non-vintage wines, vintage meaning a particular year, and at least three years for vintage champagne. So 2003 vintage wouldn't be taken out until 2006. Rimoise, over a period of six to eight weeks, the bottles are given a gentle turn or riddled. The gentle turn is called riddling. Turned about an eighth of a turn in order to allow gravity to pull the yeast towards the neck of the bottle. So every time you turn it, the yeast moves and heads down towards the neck of the bottle. The person who does that is called a riddler, and he'll do 10,000 bottles a shift. This step allows for the eventual removal of the sediment without the wine being emptied from its bottle. Traditionally, the remoise was done by hand, and uh, in the places that we went to in the Champagne region, they are still doing it by hand. There is somebody doing 10,000 little turns um, with both hands at the same time, flying along. Uh, increasingly, at the Gallo kind of places, the big, huge operations, they are uh, using mechanized racks known as, uh, known as uh, gyro pilates. Degorgement is the process of removing the sediment from the neck of the bottle. The neck of the bottle is dipped into an icy brine or a glycol solution which creates a small frozen ice plug that contains the sediment. So in other words, they freeze it into a uh, like a block of uh, gunk ice. Bottle is placed upright. The cap or the temporary cork is taken off. Then, due to the internal pressure that built up, the ice plug with the sediment uh, sediment just shoots out of the bottle. At this point, the wine is completely dry, meaning no um, sugar, no sugar remaining. And then we need to add the dosage, which is a sweetening syrup. Remember we said there's no sweetness left uh, at this point, so now we need to add some sweetener. It's added to the wine to adjust the desired degree of sweetness and to replenish the small amount of wine that was lost during degorgement. So when you popped out that frozen sediment, there's now less wine in, uh, in there, so they add some, um, some uh, wine to the bottle. And... Uh, some sugar dosage. The levels of dosage, so you'll see this on the side of a bottle, extra brut is very dry, so there's not much sugar. Dry doesn't mean it's, I mean it's wet, obviously, but so dry means lack of sugar. So extra brut would be very dry. Remember that one for the test. Remember I told you to look for one slide. This would be it. Extra brut is a type of champagne, which would be very dry. Brut, which would be dry. Uh, 0.05 to 0.5. That's the most popular style Brit. Extra dry, sem which is semi-dry, 1.5 to 2% sugar. Sec, which is slightly sweet, 2 to 4% sugar. Demi-sec, which is sweet, 4 to 6% sugar. And dew, which is very sweet, 6 to 10% sugar. So remember those two. Dew would be very sweet, 6 to 10%. Extra brut would be very dry, 0 to 0.05 sugar. And you would see that, obviously, on the label. We're getting close to the end here now. We need to put it in a bottle and cork the bottle. So sparkling wines are distinguished by their effervescence, or CO2, bubbles which creates pressure within the bottle equivalent to 5 to 6 atmospheres, 80 to 120 psi. Carbonation is more stable at cold temperatures and unstable at room temperature. 
Each bottle also contains a punt end or an indentation in the bottom of the bottle to help stabilize it and secure it as you're making it, and that's actually where you're supposed to put your thumb when you pour it. So you don't want your hand to touch any more of the bottle than it has to because you warm it up. The bottle is then sealed with a cork, secured with a wire muzzle. Then the bottle is returned to the sellers for more months of uh, storage until it's shipped. Vintage Champagne means the grapes are 95% from a single year's harvest. They're released at least three years after harvest, after it has gained depth and complexity through aging. Has the ability to be cellared for several years after you buy it, even up to a decade be before consumption. So you can keep it up to 10 years before consumption, although champagne generally is uh, good to consume when you get it. But you can keep it if it's a real good one. Vintage champagne is expensive and considered to be prestigious. It pairs well with lobster, heavily aged cheeses, foods served with rich sauces. Some serving and tasting suggestions. Champagne should be served chilled. Make sure it's well chilled. As we said, it's unstable at room temperature. So if you took some room temperature and you open up that uh, cork, it's going to go flying. When pouring, always proceed slowly so as not to create too much foam, which is called mousse, in the glass. It'll flow up all over the place. That's not good, plus it wastes the good champagne. It's not necessarily uh, necessary to swirl champagne in a glass like you do with wine because the carbonation will swirl the wine, will transport the aroma and f uh, flavor molecules toward the surface of the glass. For the glass, use a fluted champagne glass. Fluted means the top is going out so that you get all that carbonation, the aroma, and the flavor uh, can fill up your nose. You can use a cruvenet. When you sell champagne by the glass, you can use a cruvenet to remove the oxygen from the bottle, and then the wine will keep for days, so you should have one of them on hand. And what it does is, when you seal it, it takes the oxygen out so the champagne will last longer. Otherwise, the champagne is going to be no good in whatever, a half hour or so. The best known champagnes are also the expensive champagnes. They're in the $100 and up range, and uh, you can pay five, $600 easily uh, for these. Dom Perignon is certainly the most famous of the champagnes. Uh, Cristal is the choice of the nightclubs in Vegas where you're going to pay six to $800 for, a, if not 2000 depending on the year, for a bottle of Cristal. Perry Joe and Verve Clicquot are my and my wife's uh, favorite. Those are great champagnes. Maurice Chandon and Tettinger. Dom, not a fan of Dom. It uh, tends to be kind of bitter and extra bubbly, so uh, I don't really like Dom, but it is the famous one. So if you can afford it, uh, Cristal is good, and I uh, like Perry Joe is my personal favorite. Verve Clicquot is also excellent.